Welcome back. Uh, our lines are closing down now, but I think we've taken a more than average number of calls in the last hour and a half since we last saw you. There has been one arrest already, and there are developments to report now on several of our other cases. Nick? Let's start with the robbery in Cheltenham. Two men had been seen loitering around Bath Road in Cheltenham shortly before a security van was held up by a gunman. Up. Two of the guards were shot. Come on, get this. There's a raid on my van. Call the police. Dial 999. Why isn't he opening it? Get him to open it. Come on. John, please. Open it up. John. John, please. Please, John. God please, John. Get that door up. Please open it. Open it up. John, please. John. Terry, uh, Terry Moore, a really ghastly crime. And you've hardly been off the phone this evening, you and your colleagues. No, we've had about 170 calls, both here and in Cheltenham, uh, a lot of which have been giving descriptions and... Uh, more identities of the, the two people concerned. Uh, the description, uh, the first one being about 5 foot 10, uh, 25 to 30 in stocky build, and the blonde head man in particular. We've received more calls about him than any other aspect of the inquiry. And he's in his early 20s, uh, about 5 foot 10 to 6 foot. Now, I gather you got one call from uh, a known informant, which you're quite excited about. Um, that's something that's been followed up at the moment as to whether there is a connection between what this person is able to tell us and any offenders in the, the Cheltenham area. And a possible connection with other raids, though they've yet to be firmed up. Yes, a, a couple of calls from security guards in Worcester and Northampton thinking that um, there are connections between robberies that have taken place in those areas and, and this robbery. I know you've got an awful stack of names there. It's going to take That's you a long right. time to start going through them. Yes. Good luck with that. Thank See you. you. Well, our incident desk, David Hatch has been sorting through the calls. First of all, the case of Raymond Kelly, that 17-year-old boy who was shot at a petrol station in um, Hampshire. Yes, so very promising there. 70 calls altogether. We showed this artist's impression of one of the attackers, or at least a person nearby. We've had lots of calls giving possible names for him, and the officers are very hopeful. We also appealed on this jacket, which was being worn by one of the offenders, uh, or similar to it. We've had suggestions as to the manufacturer. What we still want to know, though, is do you know anyone who owned a jacket like this about the beginning of February? If so, please call your local police station. And we've got one other piece of information that ties in with something the investigating officers already know about, and that looks hopeful. So there may be a breakthrough there, you never know. Uh, a young man who was raped in the Bayswater area of London, three Arab attackers. Yes, uh, we've had 19 calls with possible suggestions for this artist's impression of one of the men who's got a, a mop-like hairstyle. And finally, near Penrith in Cumbria, there was a theft of some lead statues from a historic old house. Yes, we've had someone who's given us the name of one of the gang, we think, and also another that may be a lead to where those goods have been stolen, uh, have been sold. Right, thank you very much. Another murder of a prostitute in Manchester. Christine Rakino worked at night around Canal Street and Minshall Street in the city centre. She disappeared sometime after New Year's Day. Her body was eventually discovered 15 miles away at Lee in Lancashire. John Smith, you had, uh, what, about 100 calls last time I spoke to you? Over 100 now, yes. A lot of them, I know, were on the laundry mark that was found on the mattress cover in which the body was discovered. That's correct, yes. A lot of calls suggest that uh, the laundry mark may originate with the military. And of course, we'd like to firm that up with anybody at all in the army, any of the armed services, who recognise a five-number laundry mark, should contact us, please. It's 08230. 08230. There was a white van seen acting quite suspiciously uh, near the tip where she was discovered, where the body was found. Anything more on that? Yes, there are a number of calls in respect of the white uh, van. Those will be followed up over the next few days. Right and a brown car in which possibly she was seen early in the morning of January the 3rd in, in the company of a, a man. That's at Broadfield Road uh, in Moss Side, yes. Limited response so far. We would like the driver of that car, an elderly West Indian, and a female passenger with company requena to contact the incident room or anyone who can help us in that uh, aspect. All right, again, I know you've got your work cut out getting through these. Thank you very Thank much, you. John. Well, now Aladdin's cave. Eric, has anybody spotted anything that's theirs? Well, our two leading ladies have brought in a couple of calls, one from Leicestershire, another from a lady in, in Worthing who's convinced that these used to stand in the Dome Cinema. Uh, I used to frequent the Dome Cinema, and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm doubtful that those are the ones in question. Maybe not but, then. Well, this gentleman is pretty well convinced that the David Cox belonged to his father, um, stolen a few years ago, and that sounds very positive indeed. Nothing on the pregnant clock? Nothing on the clock, but my cuddlyable donkeys um, <laughs> have attracted uh, a couple of calls and again one is a very very positive call so we're uh, 
were very hopeful. I quite like those. What about the squirrel? No, nothing. I mean, can you believe it? It's such an individual-looking object. And again, one, one of the objects in the background that's caught somebody's attention is this chalice. Now, this chalice is inscribed S. Gabriel's Into Schools Junior Jumping. Now, that's been done in probably in the last 20 years. But on the back um, is an earlier inscription, and I know what it is, um, and I'm sure that S. Gabriel's knows what it is, and until I hear from somebody called S. Gabriel's or whatever, um, then only at that stage will we... Uh, Oh, we forgot the right person. Give us a call, S. Gabriels. Thanks. Well, let's now quickly get a photo call. Here's Jackie Hames. First, let's take the uh, accountant who's been missing since last October. Best news that we could have hoped for as a result of the calls to the studio. We now know where he is and I understand my colleagues are on their way to interview him. So really good news there, Nick. Good. What about Imi Asgar? He was wanted in connection with a violent yes. death. That's right. Um, Jason Swaddling um, on the, in the early hours of Sunday the 20th of January this year. We've had over 50 calls and a very, very good response. Sightings in the Reading area and some since the 20th. But although we're pleased, please call if you know where he is now. We still need to hear from you. I've seen very few calls come in on one of the cases. I've heard a call, which was a, a robber who's, I think, attacked about six or no, maybe even more, a dozen uh, building societies in the south of London. We do need to catch him. Not too many calls, as you say. There is a reward, so if you know him or know where he is, please give us a ring. And a woman who has been cashing stolen cheques around the north of England, perhaps got them too. Yeah, again, over 25 calls, very good response. Sightings all over the country. There's two names in particular which officers are keen on, both in the north of England, and they're going to follow that up first thing in the morning. Morning, so fingers crossed. Thank you, Jackie. Well, finally, we ask if you could shed any light on the tragic death of the young taxi driver, Steve Johnson, from Stoke-on-Trent. Steve's body was found at first light, just yards from his cab, near the village of Malcop. He'd been stabbed to death. And we're talking about the very early hours of Saturday, the 22nd of December there. Yes, we are. You've had a lot of calls. Yes, any we've news? had, yes, we've had uh, several calls, uh, particularly interesting in respect of the sighting of the young man at the rookery which we are obviously following up straight away. Right. Now, what about those unaccounted for fares? There were six fares during the course of that night, the Friday the 21st of December, that you wanted to trace. Yes, unfortunately, the response has been disappointing as regards the fares uh, that travelled with Steve that night. Uh, and I would renew the appeal to anyone that travelled with him that night to come forward. I can appreciate that maybe circumstances which do cause people to be reluctant, but I can assure them that any information will be dealt with in the strictest confidence. Also, presumably, it's in their interest to have their fingerprints eliminated from your inquiries. Yes. Right. Um, this was a meaningless murder of a quiet, unassuming man. Yes. Uh, although a tall person in stature, he was a very timid individual, and certainly, uh, there's, as we've said earlier, no reason at all to give an indication as to the motive for this crime. Please do help if you can. Well, that's it uh, for this month. The lines are closing down now. You'll see other numbers, though, on the screen in just a moment. We'll tell you what develops, of course, when we're back with Crime Watch next month. Meanwhile, as always, don't have nightmares, please. Sleep well. Good night. Good night.